Uh, now I'm going to introduce our, our EDC director, uh, Mr. Frank Willett, uh, to introduce, introduce our guest this evening. Uh, this is a special presentation by Creative Energy uh, Systems. Mr. Willett. Thank you, Mayor Council, for having us this morning, this evening. Uh, you are about to hear from Rod Flores, project engineer with Creative Energy Systems, a large spur Colorado-based company, CES has stated an interest in developing a waste to energy facility converting landfill waste into energy east of Golden Grain Energy in Mason City. The project would represent $35 million in capital investment and the creation of up to 58 new jobs in Mason City with an annual payroll of nearly $3 million. The corridor first engaged CES via a lead from the Iowa Department of Economic Development in May. We were in contact with the landfill of North Iowa within a week. In June, the company visited North Iowa for the first time and was hosted by a contingent of city, county, business, and corridor leaders. Meetings with the City, County, Alliant, Energy, Landfill, uh, and numerous other groups, uh, including the Department of Natural Resources, continued throughout the summer. Uh, and tonight, the council is asked to create an opportunity for further review and due diligence on this project. By issuing support for the proposal uh, in your packet, you give no rubber stamp. You create a process which includes Zoning Board of Adjustment, Department of Natural Resources, Landfill in North Iowa, uh, Alliant Energy, and other approvals and permitting or contracts. This is a highly complex project with many moving parts. Uh, one of those parts is what's before you tonight. And again, make no mistake, what's before you is no rubber stamp, no final check off. What's before you is a conditional agreement to direct staff to develop a development agreement to be reviewed at a future council meeting when the project is much further along and future due diligence is complete. Uh, there have been concerns raised about the speed at which the council is taking up this issue. Uh, fundamentally, I believe you're taking up the right issue uh, at the right time. I wish to emphasize that we welcome scrutiny of all projects to ensure that they're the right fit for the communities in which we work at the corridor. As a function of approval tonight, at least four future public hearings and opportunities for input will be created. Zoning Board of Adjustment, Landfill of North Iowa, City Council again and the Department of Natural Resources with no action. I'm not sure much of this uh, is likely with respect to the future of the project. The corridor endorses Mr. Trout's recommendation to the council to permit the drafting of the development agreement for future approval. Uh, and I now uh, have the pleasure of uh, uh, introducing Rod Flores, who again is the project engineer for Creative Energy Systems. He's going to take you through the particulars of the proposed project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Will. Mr. Flores, welcome to Mason City. Well, thank you, Mayor, and whole council. Thanks for this opportunity to, to at least discuss what we're going to try to develop in, in your community. We've, uh, we're a small company. We're in Larkspur, Colorado. Can everybody hear all right there? Yep. Fine. Okay. And I'll see if I can run through this. Technical difficulty here. Check the right. Click the right one. So, uh, I'm on the right, right one. Click the left. Sorry. Try the left. It's dark on the bottom. Is that an indicator? Our, our focus is to create 
green energy projects. Uh, we've been working on a waste of energy project for the last two and a half years. We've also got a, uh, a project that involves uh, water cleanup, molecular separators, and we do uh, strategic energy management plans for uh, various industries and uh, government installations. Our mission statement is to bring sustainable green energy to technology and technology and jobs to the market. Our, our focus tonight is the waste energy facilities. Next slide, please. Uh, waste not, want not, just a little uh, a teaser to get you thinking that, that it is possible to eliminate waste completely. Next slide. The uh, United States is blessed with a number of uh, uh, energy resources. We, we're a very fortunate country. We've got petroleum, coal, natural gas. We've got nuclear possibilities. We've got some hydroelectric. That little piece of the pie down there called others is 1%. That's the, the focus of where we're headed with this waste to energy stuff. Currently, the United States uses about 86% of their fossil fuels for uh, creating energy. Next slide, please. These are the choices for renewable energy, wind, solar, hydropower. Hydropower includes tidal and wave type power generation. Then there's geothermal, biomass, wood and agri chip products. There's uh, waste energy, which would include municipal trash and industrial waste and sewage. Our focus is the municipal trash. One ton of trash uh, generates enough energy to equal one barrel of oil. Next slide, please. These are the states, the green ones, that are currently considering or already have waste to energy projects in action. 26 of the United States states have uh, recognized waste to energy as renewable energy. Iowa is one of those states. Next slide, please. Commercial municipal solid waste energy has been in operation for over three decades, uh, mostly on the East Coast, uh, Minnesota, and uh, the West Coast. Uh, next slide, next slide, please. The uh, municipal solid waste was uh, granted recognition by the EPA in 2005. Uh, they have given it full blessing for renewable energy credits. Converting ordinary waste is what we're going to do with gasification. It, it produces a synthesis gas by exposing the trash to extreme heat between 1300 and 1800 in an oxygen starved chamber. That syngas that's produced from that, those elements being introduced to that high temperatures is then scrubbed, cleaned, <coughs> compressed, and used to power a gas turbine. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. <laughs> no this is a, the, the picture is, is a waste energy plant that was recently opened in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, Europe has embraced waste energy in over 400 installations already. The United States has currently 87 in operation. China has made a vow that they will have 30% of their power from waste energy products by the year 2013, or 2030, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. What we want to do is divert the trash from the landfills, recover all the recyclable materials, conserve the available cropland, which is kind of a no-brainer, produce renewable power, reduce dependence on fossil fuels, base load power would be available 24 hours a day, and it would have a local source. Wind and solar are excellent sources of power, however, they do have some uh, drawbacks in that they're only available when the sun shines or the wind is blowing. We would create some local employment. We expect 55 to 60 full-time jobs with benefits. We also expect some peripheral employment to be coming from those jobs. Waste energy actually improves the environment because we, we take organic and hydrocarbon type materials that would normally be buried in a landfill and we eliminate them. They won't be decomposing underground and trying to contaminate the water level and uh, releasing methane into the environment. Next slide, please. 
Our fixed units are, are 10 megawatt. They can be daisy chained together up to, to 100. We do operate 24 <coughs> seven. Uh, we're capable of eliminating about 240 tons per day for each 10 megawatt component. And of course, we've reduced the uh, fossil fuels and we will meet or exceed EPA standards. Next slide, please. This is kind of a convoluted, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but that's the block diagram of how this all works from reception of the trash at one end to the shredding, processing, sorting, uh, drying, send it to the gasifier, suck off some of the heat, then we scrub it, we compress it, we store it in a tank like an LP tank, then we introduce it to the gas turbine to power that. Next slide, please. The waste stream will have about 87% of the waste stream is usable, it's combustible. The other 12% uh, is non-combustible, such as uh, concrete, construction debris, and rubble. There is about 1% in your trash that's reusable. That's uh, the glass, the cans, the, uh, the plastic, even scrap tires can be considered recyclable. Next slide, please. This is a picture of one of our turbine units. That's a complete 10 megawatt unit. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. The central, uh, we chose Landfill North Iowa as, as being a good spot because they produce at least 250 tons per day. The power company, Alliant Energy, was willing to purchase the power from us. They volunteered it even though they didn't need it. They thought it was the right thing to do for the community. Uh, the available workforce is here. We think you've got enough 55 to 60 people who are looking for work. The highway access is present. There's a rail access nearby. Natural gas is there. The property is close to a substation, which is a key item. And sewer and water will be available. Next slide, please. This is a picture of the site we've chosen. Uh, on the left there, you see Golden Gray Energy. We are the uh, piece of property ordered by the 1247 and the 1250 and the 489, right adjacent to the substation down there in the lower left central. Next slide, please. This is uh, too small to see. I hope your, your packet has a good illustration, but this is just a, a preliminary site plan of how we depict the, the plant to be constructed. Next slide, please. References, next slide, please. These are some uh, pro waste to energy outfits that, that put up a pretty good argument. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, we expect to extend the landfill life, conserve the fossil fuels, reduce foreign oil dependence, reduce stress on the environment, improve the local economy with jobs, and promote the idea of green energy. Next slide, please. This is my final slide, but I wanted to keep it up here for everybody to look at. This is what we expect to create. Uh, 58 jobs, 22 of them that would be white collar jobs, producing about 62,590 per year as a salary. The blue collar jobs will average about 27,583. The payroll will be about 2.4. Our investment will be about 35 million. It's all private financed. None of this is coming from tax money, federal money, or support money from anywhere else. We do hope we get the tax abatement. With that, my time is up. Thank you very kindly. Sorry about the technical difficulties there. All right. Uh, before you go, uh, for us, we'll do a quick round of questions here. Uh, my, my up there. So, um, council, we'll just do a five minute block. If you have any more questions you want to answer, we'll just entertain a motion to, to, uh, to, to uh, Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Flores? Yeah, can you explain to us why rail is important? I'm under the understanding that the only trash or facility we use is trash that's currently going to the landfill. So my assumption would be that the rail is needed for something going out. Going out. If you could if you be, tell, me, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, we, we expect to have a number of recyclables that we'll want to sell on the commodity market. In order to guarantee a good price, we have to be able to transport it to a place where we could get that price and do it efficiently enough that we could justify sending a, a, a boxcar full of 80,000 tons of, of aluminum cans, for instance, to the West Coast to get a better price than we would get in Des Moines or in Omaha. So it, it's for a commodity. <coughs> Not necessary, but, but value. 
Um, do, do you anticipate any hazardous waste being created by your facility that you would be shipping by rail? Negative. Do you anticipate creating any hazardous waste that could not go to our landfill? No. No, and we will not receive any hazardous waste at our site that is currently not allowed at the landfill of North Island. We, we intend to have one of their hazmat trained supervisors on our property during the operation so that he can train us as to what we can accept, what we can't accept, and supervise the whole operation in that respect. Um, tell us a little bit about the DNR permitting process. I'm understanding that the process that you propose is a new process. And so how do you work with the DNR in identifying potential pollutants and getting to a point that the facility could be permitted? We, uh, I met with the DNR yesterday. Uh, Dave Phelps, John Curtin, Gary Smith, and Alex Moon. They were good enough to meet. This is the second meeting we had with them. They, uh, they gave me the parameters and the guidelines that we were gonna need to, to satisfy. They're all public documents that that uh, I can't remember the number on them right now, but I can get it for you if that would, would help. It's uh, AAA, or four AA and four uh, K is the, is the subparts of the the act that we have to adhere to. They they are confident that if we can do something similar to what the Ames Iowa plant is doing, or better, that we will exceed their standards. I would, imagine, I would imagine that since you're a new process, there's really a couple of layers of permitting. First would be to get to a point where the DNR would be comfortable with the process and you'd be able to go, in, uh, go into production. But would there not be uh, regular um, emissions testing that would go on to make sure that, you're, that you remain in compliance with the permits? That, that question came up. There would be regular and impromptu tests on a regular basis until they were satisfied that we were doing exactly what we said we could. And then they would be less often, but they would still keep coming for monitoring. For early on in the process, do you have a feel for what regular means? Is that daily, weekly, monthly? Yeah, it'd probably be more monthly than daily. We will, we will collect data on a daily basis. We'll have an environmental engineer on our staff who will collect that data from the stack every day and the water flow as well. And, and he will keep those records. We will submit them to the DNR. They are curious also how we're going to operate. Because we are a, a new cat on the block. And, and they want to know how it's going to operate and what's going to happen. Will your facility be insured so that if there is an environmental accident, whether it be ground contamination or whatever, that the cost would be covered? You know. The entire operation is insured not only for liability issues, but for production. If we fail to produce enough electricity in a given month to satisfy Alliance contract with us, say we only produce 8.5 and they were requested 9.9, .9, they would make up the difference. It's a pretty healthy outfit. It's called International Risk Group. They, uh, they have crawled on board with us early on with projects in Colorado that we were pursuing and uh, they will stay in place for the project tonight. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thornquist. Uh, Mr. Marsh, please. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. Obviously, the citizens are concerned about older and you're dealing with garbage. So, a couple of questions. Is garbage going to be diverted from the landfill and go directly to your location? Yes. It, it'll be what, what we propose to Landfill North Iowa is that they would divert the commercial haulers to our site. They would still accept the pickups and the small loads at their site. Well, that site will stay open. We will take all the commercial trucks to our plant. And it would be stored inside or open outside? It will be dumped inside and processed inside, all of it. So the, potentially there'll be very little odor because it's not outside? I, I'm also concerned with the odor. Um, I visited a plant in Alexandria, Minnesota this morning. Uh, Hope Douglas. Uh, they recently expanded a waste energy site there. They're very much the same size that we propose to be here. They handle about 250 tons per day. Inside the building, you smell it, and it it sticks to you. I I think we're we're fooling ourselves if we think it's going to smell like roses inside the building. Trash cans smell. Outside the building, 
not a thing. I, I walked around the entire plant. They, they built this plant in 1986. And uh, they were out on the outskirts of town next to 3M Manufacturing. Since that time, there is now an office complex, a college, and a hospital that are all within a quarter mile of their site. They're building around it. There's a training facility next door to it. it it's, it's interesting that they're all symbiotic. They're using the, the heat that they generate. They're piping it in steam pipes <coughs> underground to, to heat the college, to heat the hospital, to process 3M. So they're, they're, they're working in cooperation together. But the smell, I'm concerned about it as well. I've researched five companies that do deodorants for operations like this. Uh, they even have a deodorant for swine confinement barns. Those of you that have walked inside a, a confinement barn probably realize that's, that sticks to you very quick and it doesn't go away until you get a shower. But they claim they can handle it. I'm not sure, but I think we'll have some safeguards and some controls in place to, to take care of it. And just lastly, I hope we have plenty of opportunity to get together, counsel, with your company and oh, yes. work all the details. I'm sure we will. We'd, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marsters. Ms. Solberg. I was curious if this emits much noise. If, if it, the turbine will be the loudest unit. It's a jet engine. It's in an insulated container. You can stand about six foot away from it and carry on a loud conversation. You get about 10 foot away from it, you can carry a normal conversation. You go outside the building, it's a hum. That's all we expect to see coming out of that, or hear coming out of that building. Okay. The uh, processing equipment is loud too. I experienced that this morning. At, Alexandria. It's it's not loud enough that I would want hearing protection, but it's not comfortable that I'd want to stand next to it all day long either. Well, that's interesting that you say that. Now, you say that inside the building smells, but there's nothing that goes outside that would drift away with the wind or any what we nature? What we expect to see released from our buildings would be the, the vapor from the from the turbine. Everything else would be self-contained in a closed loop. The, the only emissions that we're gonna have to be watchful of is the gas turbine operation. Those emissions will need to be cleaned with uh, either limestone or charcoal, and we'll have to collect that material maybe twice, three times a year, and, and dispose of it properly, otherwise, the only thing we expect to see coming out of the stack is a heat bloom. You'll see some white vapor in the cold months when it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. Super, thanks. Thank you, Ms. Solomon and Mr. Hickey. Well, I had an opportunity to see your uh, first presentation at the Land Bill Award, so I've, I've been able to follow this pretty close. But the one thing with the enclosed facility, do you, do you predict any, I know you go to some of the department stores and, and uh, um, grocery stores and you have bags and stuff blowing all over this. You got a way to contain that material from blowing all over. It, it's going to be difficult. We, we expect a six foot chain link fence around the entire perimeter with a windbreak, a double, double conifer with a single deciduous tree windbreak. It's going to take a while for those guys to get up where they're actually effective. But the six foot chain link will have to suffice. And we'll have to do our best to keep the doors closed when the wind's blowing from the right direction. The other question that has been thrown out there has been uh, loss of jobs to landfill. How do you predict to overcome that? That's a concern for ours. Our object coming into town is not to eliminate jobs, it's to create them. What we've asked Mr. Rowland at the landfill is that he could consider subcontracting key people from his operation, the scale operator, the hazmat, the hand loader, uh, maybe some others that, that can help out to either supervise or work with our group. We, we think we can satisfy that inconvenience for him by we'll, we will subcontract $30,000 worth of their salaries every year to work in our plant and then go back to the landfill whenever he needs them again. Sure, so there wouldn't be any loss of jobs, you would just subsidize them. <laughs> so we would subsidize them. We, we've talked to, to Mr. Rowland there, there's some other 
creating things we might do, but uh, at this time, that's the best we come up with. The last question I have is, and I haven't heard an answer to this one, is what is the life expectancy of your facility? At 20 years on, on the bulk of the equipment, with good maintenance, 30 years. Uh, operations like this are almost 30 years old now, but uh, not many of them are that old. The one in Spokane is 20, 26 years. That's the oldest one that, that I'm kind of familiar with. There's some on the East Coast that are, that are large scale, and those, those folks are doing 300 megawatts, and they're changing equipment out and upgrading and doing stuff, so I don't know when they, what their lifespan is. I guess I got one more question. Uh, I found out the 10 megawatt facility, this is pretty good size considering I think our Emory generating station is a 20 megawatt facility, roughly. 500. Oh, it's 500. So, okay, I was missing the form. <laughs> how, how much electricity does 10 megawatts would that provide electricity to? It, I'm, I'll take a stab at it unless you guys have better numbers. But it, it, it's roughly a, a 30 to 40,000 population. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks, Mr. Hickey. Ms. Weaver. Thank you, Mr. Forrest. Uh, you, you said you're kind of familiar with this pan. Yeah. Mr. Weaver, can you use the microphone? Sure. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. It's the first time anybody's asked me to use the microphone. Well, I just want to make sure everyone hears that. You said you're kind of familiar with this process, and you also said you're the new cat on the block. And you also said at the beginning that you're in the business of developing energy plants. How many plants have you developed as gasification? We, we've designed and developed two now, and we've got a third one on the drawing board. Are they on the grid working? They are not working. We've designed them. What, what we are doing is taking existing equipment that's operating in other places, and we're assembling all those components together in a single system. And it's designed to work with small lots like this one where there's 250 to 300 tons. Is that, is that something you find typical of existing equipment that you can turn into gasification plants? Uh, not like existing, that? yes, yeah. There are gasification systems out there that operate for commercial, non-commercial non use. They work in, in industries and all, uh, or handle only the, the cardboard that comes out of Walmart, for instance. And they just produce electricity to power within their own industry. Well, you, you, can you realize where people would get sort of concerned about the environmental issues, specifically when, when you would welcome every tire you could get your hands on to, to do that? You can see where that. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's why the DNR wants to work with us very closely on this, and we're going to hire a professional engineering environmentalist to do it. I think your words were that if you could get your hand on every tire that you could get your hand on, you, you would do that? Here. I would do that. Yeah, you know, and earlier, uh, Mr. Uh, Willett talked about your company being a good fit for the community. That's where you lost me at the landfill board meeting. Okay. I want to clarify what I say here. Everybody's supportive of jobs. Everybody wants good jobs and a good economy. There's no question about it. That's our number one charge. I think we decided on it was a unanimous decision. The good fit, I'm just not into bringing a plant here that would be in love with the fact of burning everybody's tires. And and two, your comment got Kitty Wonkus, and maybe I asked Brent Trout if, it, if there was a correction involved in the Globe Gazette, but it was said there is no emissions to the plant. Everything's done indoors. That was the comment in the Globe Gazette, no emissions. There's no emissions from the gasification. Right, but there are emissions from the steam, from the, the from turbines. The and when you scrub them with limestone and charcoal and you take that mercury and dioxin and the, the other 22 different highly toxic chemicals, you, you, you bundle that up, you've got to get rid of that. That cannot come to the landfill board of North Iowa. No, we will not take it to the landfill. We do not, well, that's my question. Where are you hauling that to and how long and how often will you do it? And how much of that toxic, extremely toxic, as you know, one tablespoon of mercury in the size of a lake, a clear lake, can make big fish unedible completely to human consumption for years. So where would, where would this product sit and wait and be till it got moved to where would it go to and how would it be transported? 
We, we'll handle it. I, I assume you're talking about the ash. It could be ash, yes. What, what else would you be thinking about? I'm talking about what you call your limestone and charcoal scrubbers for the okay. turbine. Those will be introduced to the Those ash. will be toxic. I just want to know where are you going to put those at in storm and how would they leave your property? They will be stored on site in containers, covered and kept until we can dispose of them in a proper place. And what is that proper place? There's sites in Utah, for instance, that we can truck this to and dispose of it. The DNR is considering letting us put it into a monofill. Where at? Wherever we can get one built. You know, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I've been on the landfill board for 12 years. They do an excellent job out there. We have a great working relationship with the DNR. We have no uh, pollution. We have everything under control. Our liners are all high tech. Our sludge goes out to the treatment facility out here. We capture everything. We're in the process of working with our methane. And uh, I just, I just got to tell you that I just don't see how this is uh, fitting in with, with what Mr. Willett would say a good fit for the community. We don't have a problem right now. The DNR is a partner. They're, they're, they're not here to regulate and to look at this. And I just feel that. I guess I just I'm not interested in having a plant that would be interested in burning every tire they can get their hands on. Are we talking tires or ash? We're talking tires that you okay. mentioned at the Let's, last let's address the tires, Mr. Weaver. The, the tires are a high BTU unit. Sure, I understand that. We can use them in place of trash. We can clean up the, the tire deposits that are on the farms, behind the machine shed, wherever they're stored. And we clean those mosquito heavens up and take care of them and use them for green energy. They will also store rather well because they don't decompose. I would like to have tires as my backup source of feedstock. Well, also, Mr. Reaver, your time is expired. We'll, we'll come back. You, you can put in your answer if you want. Okay. I, I, I think they're, they're good questions. We, we have addressed that with the DNR. They will monitor us very closely to make sure that we handle all of our waste. Anything that comes out of our plant or is concentrated within our plant will be dealt with in accordance with the standards that they set forward. And I, that's the best answer I can give you, Mr. Weaver. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nelson, I believe. Yes, you. yes. Most of my questions I listed have been addressed. I do have one. Um, in the uh, Gold Gazette, uh, I read Mr. Rowe, the landfill director, said in Gold Gazette, and I quote, Mr. Rowe, there are a, a lot of waste energy programs throughout the country, including this one. There's a lot of unanswered questions on the economics of it, pro and con. So I guess my question is, maybe you could address this. What are the pros and cons without asking Mr. Rowland to get into that and pretty much The pros of a waste energy plant are the creation of jobs, where I start. The extension of the landfill, because we avoid burying trash in the ground. We, we also, by doing that, avoid the decomposition of that trash in the ground and, and the release of methane from that decomposition. We create a green energy that takes us off fossil fuel dependence, and that's about as good as I can get. Well, what's the con? The con is possibly the odor, possibly handling the waste products that Mr. Weaver spoke of. Uh, we think we've got safeguards and we've got amendments to take care of those items. Uh, the odor is about as far as I can come. I think that's the thing that, that I'm concerned about most, and I think it's it's something we can either eliminate or control. Yeah, you don't mind me. I, I have four questions here, I guess, and I think you agree with most of them. You have to continue employment of the current North Iowa landfill, full-time employees, I think there's 50. That concerns me how the outcome work. Uh, I'm concerned about additional costs to the May City taxpayers on garbage. Uh, I think that was, was, was mentioned in, in a previous article. Environmental is always a big issue, and I think that's been among us all. What's going to be going up the smoke stack into our local air? That, that concerns me, as I think most of us. And the economic future of the North Iowa landfill, that concerns me too. So, I think you could well address some of those things, but if not, you're welcome to speak to them. I, I, 
When, when we addressed Mr. Rowland, he was, he was very agreeable to listen to what we had to present to him, and he does run one of the best landfills in the state of Iowa. They, they brag about him from their office. Uh, it's very well coordinated and, and run. It's, it's spotless for a dome. It's, it's taken care of very well. He has the concerns, as do we, that, that there be some confusion in a change if they divert trucks to us. Uh, County Commissioner Bob indicated that we may create a problem with trucks trying to take that, that low maintenance road over to our plant, from their plant. And there's some, some thoughts there that, yeah, it's going to be a learning curve. They're going to have to go back out to a paved road. After they made their first trip to us, they'll understand that they're going to be diverted and they'll know the route to take and go from there. We don't want to eliminate any of his jobs. We want to continue them. Uh, if, if he wishes to eliminate jobs by attrition, that's entirely up to him, but we're not going to be the cause of it. We're going to keep 58 jobs on hand and try to work it from there. Just one final question there. Uh, you spoke to this, but I think it's important because I've had some citizens call me about this. They're very concerned about what's going to be hazardous material being trucked in to your facility and also what other communities will be you know, outside where the present search will be trucked in to you. So that, and I know you can do it, but I think it's important enough to address it again. Thank you. I, we will not accept any hazardous material at our site that's not presently accepted at the site where the landfill in North Iowa is. In fact, we don't want it. That just means we're going to have to sort it out, separate it, hold it in a container, and then take it over for Bill to dispose of it. And that, that's extra work for us as well. So if we can educate people to it, we'll, we'll put our effort to that and try to make sure that we don't have those items, at least in the, in the volume that they are. We, we're going to try to be a good neighbor on this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. All right, folks, do you guys have any more questions? We want to do one more round here, you guys. Uh, we'll move through the meeting and then uh, see what you have here. Yeah. Right here, we'll get All right. Let's see, now, thank you, Rod. We appreciate it very much. Great information. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa.